Over the past couple months, I have had the fortunate opportunity to watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer for the very first time. Now, going into Buffy, I thought I would probably enjoy the show, but not as much as I actually did. I thought it was going to be kind of a cheesy show that would be pretty fun to watch, but something that I would watch and not really think about too hard and move along, right? But I gotta say... This is one of the better shows that I think I've ever watched. And I think it really did a lot for the sci-fi genre, the, the supernatural genre, the horror genre, and the list can kind of go on. It truly is a very unique show. And if it didn't exist, I don't know if we would have a lot of great shows over the last 20 years. So in this video, I'm going to be kind of giving my overall thoughts on the seven seasons of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm not going to go episode by episode by any means. I'm just going to give my general thoughts on it. Talk about the things I enjoyed about it, things maybe I would have changed or like to see a little bit different, if I would ever rewatch it again, and if you should watch the show if you've never watched it before. So be aware that spoilers are ahead for this video, you have been warned. So there is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie that came out a few years before the show, and it was pretty much a flop as far as I understand it. It's not even near the popularity of the show, but in 1997, Buffy the Vampire Slayer came out, and I would say the sci-fi world, nerd world, whatever you want to call it, changed forever. So Buffy the Vampire Slayer focuses on Buffy Summers and her group of friends as they take on the demonic world of vampires, demons, and all the dark forces of the universe. And as cheesy as that may sound, it is honestly a really fun ride. And I'm not going to dig into this too much. I might make a video on it another time, but I would argue that the show Supernatural would not exist without Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There are so many parallels between Supernatural and Buffy. Like I said, I'm not going to dig into it too deep here, but if you've watched both shows, I think you can see where I'm coming from. There's just a lot of similarities there. And again, if Buffy did not exist, I don't know if Supernatural would have existed, let alone had the success that it did have. So Buffy is an action comedy show. It has some darker tones, even though the show's PG. It's always mixed well with a lot of great comedy, along with it also taking itself seriously throughout most of the show, but you have a lot of comic relief, especially in the forms of of Xander and a few other characters. So circling back to Buffy, she is the main character, the one true vampire slayer, and she's the main character of the entire show. And then we have her close group of friends, and that is Xander and Willow. And to a lesser extent, I would say early on in the show, there is also Cordelia. And of course, Giles, her watcher, is pretty much her pseudo father figure throughout the show. Now, this group, also called the Scooby Gang or the Scoobies, is the kind of the main group throughout the first few seasons of the show and they go through trials and tribulations to save the world from many apocalypses or apocalypt eye not sure how you say that and neither does the show so not sure that's kind of the main core group early on and of course throughout the run of the show there are additions and subtractions to the scooby gang but at its heart it's always buffy xander and willow so the world of buffy is very fun it has a lot of lore it's very in-depth when it needs to be when it explains the vampires the demons etc etc but i think what makes the show shine so well is the characters. There are so many well-written characters throughout the whole show, and there's no doubting that this show does what a lot of modern shows and movies struggle with, and that is having compelling and well-thought-out characters. The writing for all the characters is truly top-notch, and every character deepens and develops over the run of the show, whether it's just maybe even a little bit, they all do deepen and develop over the run of the show. And it's not a secret, the majority of the cast is women, and I do think this show is a masterclass on how to write great female characters. I mean, whether it's it's Buffy, whether it's Willow, whether it's Cordelia, Tara, even Joyce, Dawn, Anya, the list can just keep going on. There's so many great women characters in this show. And circling back to the first point I made, there is just great characters in the show as a whole. To me, a great character is a great character. It doesn't matter if it's a male or female, just again, a great character is a great character. And I feel what Buffy did over 25 years ago super well that like modern Star Wars and a lot of modern shows can't figure out is yes, Buffy has superpowers and yes, she's a girl, but also at the same time, she's a true hero and that doesn't come without her major flaws. Her flaws are what make her human and more grounded and make her way more relatable for any person out in the audience. Now, I would say this show is broken up into some very distinct eras. Now, the first three seasons 
seasons of the show are very much its own era. Those are the three seasons that the characters are in high school. It has its own cohesiveness. It felt like its own deal. And that was just truly one era of the show. Now, when you move to season four, I would put season four out on its own island because season four, in my opinion, is just by far the worst season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I know they were going for a few different things throughout the whole season, but it just couldn't get out of its own way. And I just did not care for it. But getting back to what I was saying, it's out on its own island because it's just kind of an aberration throughout the whole run of the show. It just feels very different than the rest of all the seasons. And then you get to seasons five and six. I feel like those two seasons are pretty contained with one another. Yes, both seasons have different big bads, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of continuity between those two seasons. Now, season seven, I'd argue, does a decent job of kind of incorporating all the seasons that came before it, especially early on in season seven. It felt like it did a good combo of combining what came before it, but by the end of season seven, it did kind of veer off into its own direction. But early on, it did kind of encapsulate the whole run of the show as a whole but definitely there is some distinct eras of the show and I would imagine most people would agree with me that the first three seasons of the show are probably the best and then after that I would argue probably seasons five and six are the runner-up to the first three seasons and then I would unfortunately probably put season four and season seven down on the bottom of the list now getting back to all of the characters I pretty much talked about all the good guys so far and there are some good villains throughout the show but but honestly, the show and villains, it doesn't really matter. It's its more about the characters overcoming their own flaws and issues more than fighting the big bad. Yes, that's, of course, a very important part of the show. But it's really more of a character-driven show. And that's what makes the show so great. It's because you want to see how they all come together to overcome the foe. And I think this is the right opportunity to bring up like Angel and Spike. Angel is a main character throughout the first three seasons of the show. He is unique because he is a vampire but he has a soul and there's a whole story arc going through all of that but angel does leave after season three and he does get his own show which i have yet to watch fully but i do plan to hear very soon and cordelia also leaves the show after season three to join angel on angel show which does mess with the dynamic a lot and that's why season four does falter a lot for various reasons but it was weird not having those two in the fold it did open up the opportunity to have tara come into the show and spike come into the show and Spike is also another vampire, but he does not get his soul until the, pretty much the very end of the show. And he's great in his own right. He's personally my favorite character throughout the whole run of the show. He just has so many great moments, whether it's him just being just brutally honest to the group or him being, you know, a true vampire and doing his vampire thing or him actually having some very touching and heartfelt moments with Buffy. To me, he's my favorite character throughout the whole run of the show. And I feel like he had the most growth throughout the run of the show more than any other character. Character. I feel like Spike definitely did. This show may feel very late 90s, early 2000s, but honestly, I think it's super fun. I think that era is a super fun time in history, and I think they do a lot of justice. I wasn't put off by it by any means. Maybe you would be, but I think it just makes for a very fun show, and it's really fun seeing all the styles of the time and just kind of to see a world without cell phones and computers everywhere. It was a breath of fresh air. It truly was. I, I like seeing that. And also, too, this show has an awesome overall soundtrack any song that was picked for any moment throughout the show whether they're at the bronze or it's an emotional moment whatever i truly felt like it fit the scene so well whether it was a rock song an alternative rock song a pop punk song the list goes on it just it fits the show so well and it fits the era when the show was out so well it's one of my favorite things about the show and that's not even taking account the intro for the show i just love it it just fits the era and the show so well and i'm glad that they never changed it I'm glad that it was always the same song. I know it gets altered after I believe season two a little bit. It does get altered a tad, but generally speaking, it's the same song. There's just, of course, different snippets for all the cast members and stuff, but it just fits the show so well, and I do really enjoy watching it every time. My video here is probably not doing this show justice. It truly is a great show, and I highly recommend you watch it. If you're a fan of, say, Supernatural or vampire shows,
shows or just supernatural shows in general, this show is for you if you have not watched it. It's truly great. I highly recommend it. It embraces the era that it came out in, but it also too breaks a lot of ground and it still feels modern in a lot of extents of the show. And it's kind of sad to think that we're probably not ever going to get a show like this again where it can have this long of a run with this many episodes and be this great. Those days I think are just long gone. And if anyone's curious before you invest your time in it, does it end well? Does it have a good finale? Because I know bad finales can really ruin shows like say Game of Thrones or Supernatural. Buffy has an all right finale. I think it's good enough. There's a lot of threads there that if they wanted to bring it back in some capacity over the last 20 years, they definitely could have. I think there could have been like 15 more minutes added to the finale and they could have flushed out where the characters were kind of going, you know, where they're going the rest of their lives. It would have been a lot better. But overall, it was a solid finale. It was good enough to get the job done. I wouldn't put it in the bottom tier of stuff by any means, but I also wouldn't put it in the top tier of stuff by any means. It was just kind of right in the middle. It was a good finale, not great. So I think that pretty much wraps up this video. I'm probably rattling on all over the place, but I just wanted to say that this show's great and that you should watch it. Like I said, I didn't give a in-depth review of the show because that would take probably a month to write, edit, and record, but I just wanted to come on here and say that this show is great. You should watch it. And with that said, I want to know your thoughts on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Did you watch it back in the day or have you just binge watched it like I did here in modern times? Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, that'd be greatly appreciated. Until next time, guys, everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching.